Hi, I'm Shalini Misra. I'm an international interior designer and we are here to talk about my dream project, A Labour of Love, my personal home in London, which is um, a detached uh, 200 year old Victorian villa with a very beautiful garden which has very mature trees. To highlight all this, I invited halfway through the project, Sally to come and uh, help me out with the light lighting scheme. Shalini called me to come and visit the house. The project had already started, so it was deconstructed, but the shell was already there. And Shalini walked me around the project with particular emphasis on the ground and lower ground floor, explaining her vision of how the two volumes would connect and also how it was to display a wonderful art collection and all the finishes that she wanted to include within it. And therefore there was a real aspiration of how one could combine the decorative lighting elements and the architectural elements so that they worked very closely together and helped with that connection. Where previously the staircase had been down the center of the void was this wonderful void that connected, but it needed something to join it together. And that's when I said, could there be a wonderful sculptural piece of lighting that would be visible at both levels and provide that connection? So I think moving the staircase from the central void was a really great idea. And it was made out of this Calicetta Viola marble where the grains were really important to us. And it took us a long time to design the actual treads and the riser, the shape of it which we really wanted to highlight. On the side of the staircase, we had this art installation by Marcus Shinwa, an Austrian artist. These are tin tiles, so they also have their own sheen to it. What was fascinating was to try and make the feeling of each of the steps like big slabs of marble. And by lighting them underneath and making each slab float, you've got the reflected light off the marble slabs that were picked up by reflection in the wonderful red tin tiles. And it was a challenge, but it also made the progression from the ground floor to the lower ground floor very important, even though that now it was a contained staircase rather than an open staircase. It had its own adventure and appeal. Art is and has always been a very, very important part of my interiors. So there was quite a combination of different sizes, different materials, different uh, medias of art which needed to be lit. So it was really interesting, Sally, the way you actually went about lighting it. Understanding where the positioning of the art is was all important because the play of lighting the larger pieces with soft washes of light, but then the drama of the narrow beam focus over the centre of the fireplace and then also the sort of halo effect around the Kapoor because the polished nature of the purple disc meant that actually that plays on the reflections of all the light sources within the room. And it was understanding what the light pieces, the art pieces were, was all important because then one could actually tailor the lighting effects to suit each piece. And I also remember the two fireplaces we have in our living rooms. One is a Victorian piece. It's very intricately carved marble uh, design on it. And I like the way you put two floor mounted lights highlighting this marble uh, surround. I love up lighting the detail because the fireplace of the old marble fireplace was very ornate and often gets lost. People forget about it and the detail. So by up lighting it, you create a new play of light and shadow that draws its attention back and actually means that it's alive even when the fireplace itself is not lit. There are also so many different objects in the house which we've collected over the years. You've managed to light that really well, avoiding glare into our eyes. I think I'm always thinking when I'm looking at a project where potential art locations are. I'm always trying to think where the centers of focus are, whether they're a coffee table, which I always think is nice because you never want to sit under the light source itself because that's uncomfortable, but you want the light source to draw your eye, whether it's to the piece of art or the coffee table or also your dining table. And it's creating that sense of focus that creates the interest of the person sitting there. Also, it's quite a challenging house because each material has its own personality. 
the dining area wall has marquetry walls, it has a wooden wallpaper, and then it has a silk wallpaper on the wall. So many different colors, many different textures. I feel that the way I approach lighting is a bit like you've approached the palette of materials, was you're thinking of all of them, how they work together, how they play on each other, how they contrast with each other. And I always think of the way I light things is it's never from one direction. It's multi-layered. So I like the fact that I've got an uplight. I like the fact that you might have a lamp beside the sofa. I like the fact that you have a chandelier at high level. I like the pin spot that lights the dining table, the directional light onto the walls. And in a way I've tried to create to complement your materials, different layers of light that can pick out those elements. I had two 400-year-old panels and they were intricate wooden carved with egglomized mirror and hand painting on it, which I put on the study uh, ceilings, on the two ceilings in the study. I remember when we were discussing this challenge, because it's such a beautiful old mirrored ceiling, you cannot light up a mirrored ceiling because then all you'd reflect would be the light source. So then you have to think, we want to create the flicker, what would I like to see reflected? And that's when I thought that the idea of candlelight, because the idea of candlelight reflected in mirror, becomes rather magical. The entrance hall is something really important for me because I want it to be a very welcoming space. A space when people come in, I want them to be to have an impact, to have a wow factor, to have interest. So I used lots of different beautiful British craft, uh, crafted materials around the four walls of the entrance hall. So as soon as you enter, on the left-hand side is the lift. And then as you look ahead, there's this uh, sliding door that goes into the reception room. On the right of the glass door is the staircase going up and down the house. Another wall that you looked on is these egglomized mirror panels with cherry blossom hand painted. So that, that's almost two walls of the hallway. And of course there is art which says, um, it's a Mel Bochner piece of art. It's an oil piece on fabric and it says blah, blah, blah. What I love about your staircase with the carpet was the fact that each step must have been done separately because it fades and changes the blues as you go up. And whereas normally we'd light at the corner of a step because you don't want to see the light source. In this situation, we were trying to bring up the actual step point because then it would bring up the colors of the carpet. And what was rather wonderful about your staircase is it was totally dramatically like a snail almost. It curls as you go up. So looking down, you have this wonderful view of the carpet and the stairs in a very sculptural element. We really live in the lower ground floor area of the house because the family room then leads on to the garden space. One wall, um, we managed to put in a picture window so we could borrow some light between the gap of the house and the boundary wall. So this large picture window get, brings in a lot of light during the day for us. And so the window had to look at something beautiful and not just a boundary wall. We did an installation of um, granite plant and, and a sculpture, a Ganesha sculpture on, on the boundary wall, which looks, uh, which looks like a piece of art, the whole installation, and that had to be lit. Glass at night becomes like a mirror, and would only reflect the inside. So by focusing on the installation created outside, it brought it back into the room during the evening. And what was rather nice is, it has a totally different feel by night to by day, yet you still get that feeling of the extension, which I think works so well. And I think extending the space into the outside is all important. And I know that that's what you have in your living room on the first floor is to your terrace, so that in the summer you have an extra room outside. And at the lower ground floor, you spread out to a fireplace and outside dining and then later on down the garden they've got the uplighting of the trees and flowers and you feel you're in the country. 
The ceiling of the family space has this uh, installation which was commissioned by an Austrian lighting designer called Vibeke. She made this chandelier which are these discs in many different colors and it, it's quite mesmerizing. I think what they introduced was interest to the ceiling because it was slightly lower the ceiling there because it was under the terrace and but in between it was an installation that went round across the ceiling so we interspersed the installation with very narrow focus down lights that could light the coffee table give you a focus there because the installation of the chandelier gave some ambient light was very soft very warm and was very overall but not specific and that's where I could add the magic with small pools of light from an architectural aspect. And also then integrating lighting into your shelving unit as well. And that also was another layer of light. For me, I think the most wonderful thing about the lighting of the house was the thought and the heartful hard work which Sally actually put into the house, which was really a labor of love of mine highlighting so many wonderful details in such a clever, expert manner. I think because you were so passionate about the project and it being so personal to you, which is so different, it has its challenges because when you're doing things for yourself, it's always harder. And I wanted it to be perfect for you. And it was just fun, that whole, yeah, the whole journey was fun. The commissioning was a lot of fun. <laughs>